Now, assuming that associativity and commutativity hold for the complex numbers, we might consider their product in trigonometric form. Now, R1 and R2 are real numbers, so there's nothing special about the product R1, R2. Meanwhile, sys theta 1, sys theta 2, that's a more complicated expression. So let's see what happens when we multiply these together. Expanding and collecting the real and imaginary parts. Now, to go any further, we need to refer back to the sine or cosine of a sum. And that means we can simplify both of these expressions. And this gives us the following result. For complex numbers in trigonometric forms, the product gives us a complex number whose modulus is the product of the moduli and whose argument is the sum of the arguments. So let's try that out. Let's multiply in trigonometric form, then verify our result using the standard multiplication of complex numbers. So we need to convert both of these into polar form. Now that our numbers are in trigonometric form, they're easy to multiply. We multiply the moduli to root 2, and we add the arguments, negative pi fourths plus pi thirds. And this is a great answer, except we should always answer questions in the same language they're asked in. We're given the numbers in rectangular form, so we should answer in rectangular form. And that means we need to find the cosine and the sine of pi twelfths. Now to find these values easily, we note that they were obtained by adding negative pi fourths and pi thirds. In other words, they're pi thirds minus pi fourths, and we can use our angle sum and difference identities. Now we can check this using the standard multiplication of complex numbers. which gives us the same answer. Generally speaking, it's more trouble than it's worth to rewrite complex numbers in polar form to multiply them. An exception is when we raise a complex number to a power. Repeated applications of the multiplication formula give us the following. Assuming r, theta are real, and n is a whole number, r cis theta to the n is r to the n cis n theta. And this is known as de Moivre's formula, and with a name like de Moivre, you'd think that the mathematician was French. But in 1685, the government, under the influence of religious radicals, revoked a century-long policy of toleration, and de Moivre, along with many of his fellow co-religionists, fled to England. So let's see how we might use the theorem of the English mathematician Abraham de Moivre. Let's find 1 plus i, to the tenth power. While we could find this by expanding and using the binomial theorem, that's actually quite a bit of work, so let's use this in trigonometric form. So first we find the trigonometric form of 1 plus i, so Dewoff's theorem says that the power of 1 plus i is the modulus to the power, 10, and the argument will be the argument times the power, 10 pi fourths. And we can simplify the arithmetic to give us 32 cis 5 pi halves. But wait, remember, we should always answer the question in the same language it was asked. And the complex number was given in rectangular form, so we should also answer in rectangular form. And so that means we need to find cis 5 pi halves, so computing that gives us and we get our final answer, 32i.